Carrying capacity with respect to humans. Carrying capacity is the maximum population of a given species that an ecosystem can support without being degraded in the long run. So it can't harm the, the environment or it's actually not uh, carrying capacity. The carrying capacity can be exceeded but not without harming the system's ability to support that species and possibly several others. Carrying capacity can change. For example, it's likely to be lower in dry years for many species. And if climate change uh, is what scientists say it is, we're likely to have uh, many drought years in the future. And both China and India are quite concerned that they could have trouble trying to provide enough uh, food for their people if the carrying capacity is decreased because of drought. Density dependent populations uh, face this situation. Uh, starvation and disease often limit them, and this limit is called the carrying capacity, and such populations follow a sigmoid or S-shaped curve over time, but may follow a J-shaped curve if they overshoot the carrying capacity. What is the carrying capacity of Earth for humans? Well, nobody really knows. There have been a lot of guesses, but that's essentially all they are. It's not very hard to calculate the carrying capacity for cattle in a fenced pasture or the capacity for uh, fish in a fish tank, um, but it's much more difficult to calculate the carrying capacity of Earth for humans, and really no one's been able to do it yet. There's too much involved, and in fact it's even hard to say what is psychologically tolerable to humans. Can we live at a density of 10 people per square meter? Um, maybe some people can, but perhaps not everyone is going to survive that. Uh, the sigmoid or S-curve. This is really what we want. We want an S-shaped curve and not a J-shaped curve. So with the S-curve, it's shaped like an S, the letter S. Time is on the x-axis, and the population size is on the y-axis. And carrying capacity is what limits it. And as the um, population grows over time and begins to uh, approach carrying capacity, it decelerates and comes into equilibrium with the environment, um, just vacillating around that carrying capacity line. At first, there is an establishment phase where net growth is almost zero. And you can barely see any growth here at the um, beginning of this population. Then it moves into the explosive phase, where it's almost uh, linear and very steep, changing rapidly. Then there's a deceleration phase as resources diminish, because this is a density-dependent population. The resources are going down. Um, the population is either starving, or disease may get it, or the fertility rate even declines. And um, the curve starts to uh, turn the corner to, as it approaches carrying capacity. Then it ends up in a dynamic equilibrium phase, where the net growth is, again, um, basically zero over time, as the population may go up and down a bit here, uh, vacillating around carrying capacity. Now, what is a J-curve, or ex exponential growth, in comparison to this S-curve? Well, here we have a J-curve where it goes up in a J-shape and then crashes. It has exceeded the carrying capacity that we would see here in the middle, whereas an S-shaped curve, a population following that, will uh, not grow quite as rapidly, and then as it approaches carrying capacity, it will be in uh, balance with the environment. A J-curve has no deceleration and does not ease into an equilibrium the way that S-curve did. Instead, it exceeds carrying capacity and then crashes into a lower equilibrium than it would have had it stayed within carrying capacity. So we have no deceleration phase, no dynamic equilibrium, we don't uh, come in close to carrying capacity, instead overshoot. And this gives you the J-shaped curve, like the letter J. <clears throat>
Now, what's so scary about this um, exponential growth when you overshoot carrying capacity? Well, let's consider, uh, first of all, uh, a, a colony of bacteria in a jar that doubles every minute. The uh, amount of uh, bacteria doubles every minute. And we know that the jar is full at 12 noon. When was the jar half full? Now consider that the bacteria are doubling every minute. When was it half full if it was full at 12 noon? It's actually a very easy problem. And people mess up because they try to make it more complicated than it is. It's half full at 11.59, one minute ago. <clears throat> so very easy. It's doubling every minute. If it's full at 12 noon, then it was half full at 11.59. And perhaps it took a long time to get to, let's say, 1 16th full, that it took many, many hours to get there. And that 1 16th full, if it was full at 12, then it had to have been 1 16th full at 11.56, assuming a constant rate of increase. And then it doubled to 1 uh, 8th and doubled to one fourth and then double to a quarter, I mean to a half, sorry, um, double to half full. Now at the point where it was half full, probably the people or the population there, if the bacteria had been thinking, they would say, oh gosh, we got lots of room. No problem. Tremendous growth is still possible. Uh, we could uh, make a, a killing in real estate or whatever because there's so much room here and not realizing that they had um, just uh, um, they were almost one more minute and it was full. Now if by chance this uh, colony of bacteria, uh, population bacteria, found another jar, how long would it take for the next jar to be full? Well that of course is just another minute. So at 1201 it's filled up an entire new jar. So the point is that virtually no change can happen for a long time with a population like this that's following the J-curve. And then in a relative flash, so it doubles and it doubles and it doubles, but uh, it's so small, it still seems completely insignificant. And then it starts becoming significant, and now each time it doubles, there's a real difference in the population, um, and it could fill up very rapidly. Well, this graph is actually the graph of the human population starting at 10,000 BC, where we had uh, very few million people at 10,000 BC. I think it was over a million, but at any rate, not many. By AD 1, um, the population was about uh, was not quite 200 million. Then our first billion in about let's see, 1800. Yeah. So Homo sapiens had been walking the earth for 150,000 years approximately, and it took um, all that 150,000 years to reach our first billion in the year 1800. And then we had our second billion in 1930, that was 130 years later. Third billion in 1960, within just 30 years. Fourth billion, 1975 in 15 years time. Fifth billion, 1987, 12 years. Sixth, 1999, again 12 years after the fifth billion. Seventh billion is on target to uh, arrive here by 2011 or 2012 and that would also be about 12 years. Now the eighth billion uh, is projected to be approximately 2030 and that will be roughly 19 years. So it seems as though we're slowing down. And the ninth billion forecast for the year 2054, and uh, that will be 24 years. So we are slowing down. Now here's a graph that shows the same thing, with the dawn of agriculture being about 10,000 years ago. And the population was doubling and doubling, but essentially doing uh, not even obvious and then all of a sudden, uh, it started taking off. Here in 1800 is our first billion, and then you can see how rapidly it's grown. Something like the bacteria in the jar, but in our case, we don't know how big the jar is. Next, I'll talk about what happens to populations that follow a J-curve.